Hello and welcome to the Classical Conversations YouTube channel. Today we're visiting the homeschool space of Debbie Kelly where she homeschools a fourth, sixth, and a ninth grader. So uh, Debbie, give us the tour. We have an untraditional classroom space. Yeah. It does not look like school at home. What you're standing in is actually what we affectionately refer to as the with room. Um, no, with room. Is that named after someone in particular? It is George With. He was one of the lesser known founding fathers, but he was actually a teacher of Thomas Jefferson. Huge classical educator, in fact, was homeschooled himself by his mother, which was very unusual at the time. Um, typically mothers, women, were not right educated enough to educate their own families, but his mother was a Quaker, really believed in um, self-education mm -hmm. and encouraged his students to educate themselves, yeah. which is what we're trying to do. So Debbie, how does homeschooling look in your home? So this is where we do a lot of our independent study. You're not going to see a whiteboard in here. Right. The whiteboard's in the kitchen. Okay. So we do all, like I said, I have a fourth and sixth grader, so we're still doing foundations, memory work, and we do that in the kitchen. Um, and that way we have it up. It's there uh, in a room where we see it all week. We do things like IEW. Um, I have one who's a really, um, voracious writer and two that are a little bit more reluctant writers so we cuddle up in my bed individually and do IEW up there. So this room is really used more for their independent study. There is a computer in here. It is not hooked up to the internet, so it's used for things like mostly typing papers. Mm. So they, we do music practice in here. So you'll see the piano, mm -hmm. you'll see some guitars. Mm. Over here we have some violins. This is also where we store a lot of our books, not all of our books. This because isn't all the books. <laughs> no, there's pretty much books in every room, but a lot of books are in here. Um, so it makes for a great home library. Yeah. Um, in fact, we're getting ready to move and we're going to build an even bigger home library to keep more of the books in one place. So you'll see I have like some of my homeschooling books here so I can pull things off to reference for my own study. There's nod to our travels. Scotland, Ireland, uh, Hong Kong, and there's the nods to classicism. So we have like um, our, our bird here and fish and uh, my kids found this pine cone and said, mom, we have to put this in the with room because it's <laughs> natural science. So you've got icons of your travels and of the, the uh, per pursuits of the humanities. Yes, and of course our giant map. Yeah, this is a serious map. Is this on a canvas? I'm it's, uh, it's... Yes, it is on a frame. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. So I, I have a challenge one student right mm -hmm. now and in the spring they're going to be studying um, whatever happened to Penny Candy, but they're not there yet. So okay. we just use this to store materials that we're not using, just texts that we use for challenge. Mm. We have these great children's encyclopedias, nice. which whenever they are interested in something and ask me, our instinct is to tell what we know. So I try to fight that instinct with my children and t say, well, let's look it up and, you yeah. know, and, and empower them to look it up themselves. Everything's online, so much online now. What is your uh, source for children's encyclopedia type books? Um, I find that Osborne really makes the best mm -hmm. ones. And what's great about them is, you know, my preference would be that it would all be in the book and we would never have to go online to look up anything as far as source documents went. But they're all internet linked. So okay. um, if there's an article and it's not quite long enough, sometimes there's, there's an, 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 a lot of them have QR codes that you can actually just oh. scan and go um, on there. So huh. that's been really great. And these aren't even all of our Osborne books. A lot of them are upstairs right now in my Challenge One student's room. Now, Debbie, is this your original setup in homeschooling? When I started homeschooling um, eight years ago, we did have a classroom that mm -hmm. looked very typical. You know, we had the alphabet on the wall and I felt like I had to put posters up and it took some mentors to sort of say to me, um, it doesn't have to look like that. It can mm -hmm. look like what works for your family. And I think just sometimes people who are starting out need to sort of have that 
permission, if for lack of a better word, to say that it's okay that I don't have a room in my house dedicated to being a classroom, that we can study throughout the house um, and we can have a room that doesn't look traditional. Great. Well, thank you for showing us around. And if you would like to see more homeschooling rooms in 360 or interviews with homeschooling parents, check out the links in the description for this video. Or visit our website at classicalconversations.com to find homeschooling communities near you. God bless you and happy homeschooling.